welcome to Basketball Cinema, where we revisit the most important and iconic games in NBA history. I'm Jake Canada, and today we're looking at a 2016 regular season game between the Utah Jazz and LA Lakers. Folks, this is the last video in our four-part mini-series looking at the career of Kobe Bryant. I felt it appropriate to end this series today on August 23rd, Kobe's birthday, just ahead of Kobe Bryant Day on August 24th. If you've missed any of the first three parts to this series, I highly recommend you check those out as well. Last time on this series, we looked at the 09 NBA Finals, and today we're jumping ahead seven years to look at Kobe's final game in the NBA. As you'll see, we simply had to cover his exit from the league, but condensing seven years from 09 through 2016 down to just a couple minutes, well, it's gonna be tough, but I'll try. As mentioned, we last visited Kobe's career in 2009, arguably the best version of the Mamba we would ever see as he won his first finals MVP as well as his first title without Shaq. The Lakers somehow got better prior to the 09-10 season as adding to the core of Kobe, Powell, Bynum, Odom, LA was able to bring in Ron Artest or, or Meta World Peace whatever his name was at the time. The Lakers, led by a finals MVP performance from Kobe, were able to win their second straight chip, beating the rival Celtics in seven games. Post-2010 is where things started to get a bit hairy for the Lakers. In 2011, they were the second stop on the Dirk Nowitzki World Tour of Destruction, losing to the Mavs in a sweep in round two of the playoffs. Kobe averaged 20 points a game in the lockout short in 2012 season, but once again, his Lakers came up short in the second round, this time losing to the young OKC Thunder Corps. Remarkably, 2012 would be the last time we'd ever see Kobe in the NBA playoffs, though not for a lack of trying, of course. Prior to the 2012-13 season, the Lakers went all in to try and get Kobe his sixth ring. They acquired Dwight Howard and Steve Nash to go along with Pau Gasol and Meta World Peace in what was a ridiculously stacked starting five, including Kobe. Mamba was still great at age 34, averaging 27, 6, and 6 per game, but had to carry too large a load, and in game 80 of the season against Golden State. From their reserves. Ryan again going to work. Falls down. Again, he's struggling. He gets to the other end before a foul, maybe. Made him. Lakers might foul. They might foul to get him out of the game. That's they have to. Do. Yeah. A torn Achilles ending his season and the Lakers' hopes. Kobe iconically shot two free throws despite the injury, because, you know, of course he did. He was a machine. The 2013-14 season was a nightmare for Kobe, as he played in just six games after returning from the Achilles injury, before injuring his left knee and being sidelined for the remainder of that season. In 2014-15, Kobe would increase his scoring average back to just over 22 points a game, but did so in just 35 games played, as this time it was a shoulder injury that would ultimately cost him the season. And that brings us to the 2015-16 season where we meet Kobe and the Lakers in this video. Obviously a few tumultuous seasons for Kobe, but he was prepared to give it one last go. Indicative of Kobe's decline prior to his 20th season, just prior to the NBA tip, ESPN's consensus rankings were released of the top NBA players, and Kobe Bryant was put way down at 93rd on the list. The face of ESPN, Stephen A. Smith, well, he had some thoughts on the matter. I would ask America, do not attach any association of this to me whatsoever. I have nothing to do with such idiocy, such blasphemy, such ridiculous nonsense. This is so disrespectful. Just for reference sake, Brandon Knight and Luol Deng were slotted just ahead of Kobe on the list. So uh, yeah, one of the greatest Stephen A. Smith memes ever, and he was actually correct in it. That list was wildly disrespectful. At the end of the 15-16 season, Kobe's numbers certainly weren't great. He averaged about 18 points a game and did so on just 36 shooting from the field and 29 from deep. But the highs from Bryant were still at 420 levels, as he scored 20 plus points in a game 23 times in 66 games, as well eclipsed 30 points on six different occasions. That's really not bad for a 37 year old in his 20th season. Despite those still respectable moments from Bryant at points during the season, on November 29th, after the Lakers had started the season just 2 and 14, he announced that he would retire at the end of the season. By the time it was all said and done for Kobe in 2016, despite the difficult seasons down the stretch of his career as I outlined, Bean's resume was and still is unmatched. 18-time All-Star, 15-time All-NBA, 
12-time All-Defensive, 5-time NBA Champ, 4-time All-Star Game MVP, 2-time Finals MVP, 2-time Scoring Champ, and 1-time Regular Season MVP. I mean, sheesh! It's not hard to see why on April 13th, 2016, the final day of the NBA's regular season, NBA fans and legends alike turned out and tuned in to see Kobe's final act on an NBA court. Despite wanting to keep the focus on the action that was set to unfold between the Lakers and Jazz, Kobe admitted, yeah, that wasn't really possible. I mean, there, there was so many people to talk to and um, items to be signed and, you know, pictures to be taken. And, you know, I, I just gave myself up to that because I said, this is just, this is fine. This is cool, man. Just let it go. Just let it ride. Just enjoy it. And, and it was, uh, it was fun. An interesting subplot to the historic final game we're about to witness from Kobe is that, as mentioned, it was the final day of the NBA season. A season that, if we remember, saw the Golden State Warriors break the NBA record for wins in a single season. Basketball fans in particular, it's been a, a great day with them setting such a unbelievable record. I mean, we think about that, man. 73 wins. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. Truly ridiculous, Kobe. You're right, but yeah, nobody was watching that game. Tr trust me, nobody. And just why was that? Why was every NBA fan tuned into Kobe's final moments, whether you loved him or hated him during his career? Well, I've got about, uh, I don't know, 60 compelling reasons why, and I can't wait to show you. Throughout the game, as a tribute to Kobe, videos were played in the arena at different points of NBA legends, celebrities, and teammates honoring Mamba with kind words. I'll jump in and show you a few as this video gets on, but the first that jumped out to me came from Lamar Odom and the reaction from Staples Center faithful to seeing him. Bean, what's up? Here's your little brother, Elo. Um, just want to tell you I love you. You had a great career. Proud to say that I was right there with you. Call me Dean. Trust me that nobody else on video got a big reaction from fans when they appeared on screen. Just six months earlier, Odom had quite literally almost died. So it was super touching to see him here paying tribute to Kobe. The starting lineups for the tilt, yeah, that's not so great for either side, actually. Utah had just been eliminated from playoff contention the night prior, while the Lakers were uh, 16 and 65 on the season. Something I had a good hearty laugh at came when Lakers broadcaster Bill McDonald said this during the game. The future of the Lakers, D'Angelo Russell, George Clarkson, Julius Randle, Larry Nance. You'll see them all here tonight. Uh, funny, that uh, that didn't sound like LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, Carmelo Anthony. So the beginning of this game wasn't ideal. Kobe would miss his first five shot attempts from all over the court. That obviously wasn't how he or anyone else wanted this game to start, but right from the tip, you could read how Kobe was approaching the game. And that was to take a lot of shots. It was actually two-time All-Star Roy Hibbert who unlocked the offense for LA, first taking a shovel feed from D'Angelo Russell for the slam, then he followed a Jordan Clarkson miss for the tip-in. Into the first time out of the game, six minutes down, Kobe had zero points. Some more tribute videos poured in during the timeout break, this time from a slew of high-profile celebrities. I'm talking some absolute California legends in Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian, the funny-looking dude from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I'll also, wait, who is, who is this? And now you get to retire. You get to have some time off. This is great. Taylor Swift? Really? Um, I, I mean, okay, but like Taylor Swift got featured in a Kobe tribute video? Haters gone hate, shake it off. Taylor Swift, always right. Obviously not a great start to the big game. That was understandable given the circumstances. You know, I knew coming into the night, you know, I just didn't want to play bad. <laughs> you know, so I had to kind of focus on the game and the start of the game was horrendous. I had to settle down. A little bit of nerves, a little bit of nerves. And uh, once the game got going a little bit, then I was able to settle down. There was like a massive amount of pressure on Kobe to perform in this one. But as you heard him mention, he was able to settle down, beginning with an impressive block of Trevor Booker on the defensive end. And that turned to offense with a pump fake and short jumper for two, his first make of the game. Kobe followed that up next possession down with a signature clinical pull-up midi from the free throw line. Very next possession down, he upped the difficulty just a bit. Kobe guarded by Rodney Hood. Kobe goes to the dribble. Kobe underneath, reverse slam, he's good! And one. And the foul! Hoop in the harm, converted free throw too. Jazz had tied the game up at 11, but another tough look from Kobe in the corner for a deep two-pointer. Jingling Joe Ingles with a pure stroke from the corner, but I'm here to tell you something right now. Kobe did not care. Kobe for three, up it goes, and down it goes! 
Bryant for three. He had a lightning quick 12 points now in the first. Imagine having Jerry West, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and James Worthy speaking on your behalf during your final game. Absolutely iconic. Kobe would get up to 15 points in the opening frame after Rodney Hood fouled him from beyond the arc. He'd go 3-for-3 three three from the stripe. To close the first, Bryant would hoist up and brick a couple outrageous heat check attempts from deep, but everybody in the building, including his Laker teammates, truly didn't mind those shots. My teammates were, uh, were just... <laughs> Uh, continuing to encourage me and continuing to say, dude, shoot, 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 shoot. And I was just like, <laughs> it's like reverse. You know, it's a weird year. You go from being the villain to now being some type of a hero <laughs> and then go from everybody saying pass the ball to shoot the ball. It's like really strange. No, but for real, for you younger fans watching this, I'm not sure you truly understand how beaten to death the Kobe doesn't pass thing got. I'll never forget logging onto Facebook in the early 2010s and seeing a brand new horrible meme about Kobe every single day. Probably still funnier than seeing ratio or those horrible copy paste under every single tweet though. Kobe was getting his only breather of the game to begin the second quarter. And I don't think we need to see the 2016 Lakers in action without Kobe. Although I will say seeing this LA roster in 2021 is pretty nuts. Second year Julius Randle and Jordan Clarkson, along with rookie D'Angelo Russell. They've each been on such a wild path since playing together with the Lakers. You're my hero to this day and forevermore. Thank you. Troy Bolton is still my basketball hero, Zach. The broadcast caught up with Shaquille O'Neal, who was sitting courtside, and gave the most spot-on description of him and Kobe as a duo. I mean, we were the most enigmatic, controversial, dominant one-two punch in Laker and NBA history. It was fun. Wish it could have lasted longer. It didn't, but times will never be forgotten. Things we have done will never be forgotten, and Mr. Kobe Bryant will never be forgotten. Ah, man, yeah. It's crazy how right Shaq is about that. Kobe checking back into the game with the Lakers now down four. He immediately hoisted up a deep attempt, but was off. 2021 Six Man Award winner Jordan Clarkson needs some shine. He finished a put back after a Randall miss in the lane. First hoop of the second quarter for Mamba, nearly getting all the way up for a dunk. Kind of just a super awesome layup though. Kobe was savvy drawing a foul on Shelvin Mack. He'd make one of two from the stripe. Mack though, getting a touch of revenge next time down, bullying D'Lo for the and one. By the way, Sheldon Mack will forever be a member of the NBA's all-name team. Now Kobe goes around, Lyles, up it goes. Kobe's got another one. Another deep bomb from Kobe. He was up to 21 in the half. Unfortunately, he did go cold in the ensuing minutes, missing three consecutive attempts. One time all-star D'Angelo Russell from the post with an easy one, then some razzle-dazzle from Kobe and D'Lo, leading to a flush from 2021 most improved player Julius Randle. One more free throw in the half from Kobe to give him 22, but another Shelvin Mack and one had the Jazz up 15 at the half. Something that I'm still blown away at is the fact Kobe had all the pressure in the world on his shoulders to perform at a high level in his final game, and he was actually able to do that. Okay, I'm putting on my jersey. I'm saying, okay, this is the last time we're going to put on a jersey. Dun, 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 right? You know what I mean? And then this is the last time I ran out of the tunnel. Dun, 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 <laughs> you know, and it, like, when those moments happen, you, you catch yourself. And you start getting really emotional. And then I say, okay, you got to block that out because that none of that makes a difference whatsoever if you've come out here and completely lay an egg. <laughs> I mean, I collapse under the weight of my own personal expectations while I'm playing NBA 2K. Everyone, including Kobe himself, built up this moment to the extreme and it didn't phase him on the court. Speaking of which, Mamba right into work in the third quarter, putting Rodney Hood in a blender before finishing at the rim for two. He was really a microwave in this game as he made it a quick two buckets in a row with a paint fader over Gordon Hayward. He missed on a healthy three-point attempt next possession down, but took a layup run to the rim off the O board. Crazy stat from this game is that here in the third quarter, Kobe would eventually shoot just one for seven from three as he continued to force up tough shots. But after Hayward made one of his own to give Utah a 12 point cushion, Kobe was able to get a difficult deuce to drop from the lane. He then dropped a patented fade off the spin out of the mid post. He was one for seven from deep in the quarter, but six for seven from everywhere else. Oh, and by the way, Kobe was up to 32 points at this juncture in the game and he was ready to add to it. Well, here is Bryant with Joe Ingles playing little defense and Kobe, they're gonna review it. But for now, we think that's a three. And just like that, 50 points was very much in play for Kobe. I mean, 50 would be impressive for sure. Hey, look, it's Jay-Z, also Kanye, and he's smiling. 
a tough make from D'Lo to give him nine points on the game. While Kobe finished the third with 37 points, another interior result muscled up and in. As we head into the final quarter of Kobe's career, let me share my favorite comment from the man himself on this performance. The coolest thing is that my kids actually saw me play like I used to play. You know what I mean? It was like, I'm like, whoa, dad. And I said, yeah, I used to do this pretty often. They were like, really? It's like, dude, YouTube it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kobe even cared about YouTube content creators. I mean, you just absolutely love to see it. A triple from Joe Ingles in the corner, then a freebie from the corner from Raul Neto, and the Jazz were back up 14 points. Kobe a miss from the mid-range. He then had one rejected emphatically on the drive. After some disruptive defense from Larry Nance, though, in transition... I bet he finds Bryant. Three ball. Yes, sir! There's 40. Our guy Jack Nicholson loving it. Trey Lyle splashing one through for the Jazz, but Kobe's perimeter touch had finally returned. Coming off a screen, he drilled a line drive for three. Bryant's second assist of the game on the look ahead to a streaking Jordan Clarkson. Then just, just watch this sequence, y'all. The Lakers can get it close. Here's Rodney Hood. Oh! Great Tark play! Black. Tark Black denies. Now Clarkson to dance! Throw it down! That's a great sequence! I know there was no Kobe in that play, but what a couple plays from the Lakers, man. And it was a five-point game. This was Kobe's 135th career 40-point game, which is just a ridiculous total. He was credited with another assist as he kicked Clarkson, who would drive and drop in a floater for two. Kobe in a phone booth, three defenders surrounding him, unfazed as he knocked down another jumper from the paint. It just seemed like destiny that LA would find a way to win this game. But their defense man, woof. A wide open dunk in transition for Hayward, and another freebie for Booker, Jazz back up nine. Kobe once again operating from the post, and ducking in for two. Utah again an answer, Chris Johnson for two, putting his side up 96-86. Allow me to stop the action here just, just for a moment to, uh, to warn you all. The final two and a half minutes of this game are impossible to enjoy in all their glory, in comparison to watching it live. So I suggest, uh, if you do have access to a time machine, set that bad boy back for this moment in 2016. If you don't, well, then you're stuck with me and I'll do my best to break it down. With Gordon Hayward matching him step for step, with Jazz defenders feigning double teams, Kobe worked his way deep in the paint and was fouled. He confidently stepped up and converted both to give him 49 on the game. In desperate need of a stop, the Lakers played wildly soft defense, but Julius Randle with a timely strip on Hayward's drive, that led to on the other end. A basket equals a 50 point game, Kobe underneath, he's got 51! Unbelievable stuff from Kobe, as he was clearly avoiding taking perimeter jumpers at this point due to fatigue. Finally, the Lakers locking in on defense, with Russell and Nance providing a double team, Shelvin Mack getting whistled for the travel. This was Kobe's 26th career 50 point game, which is just a ridiculous total. He was clearly gassed, literally on his last legs, so he made quick work on this possession, splitting a double team on the pick and roll, rising up confidently from 14 feet out for the jumper. Gordon Hayward continuing to try and spoil the party, getting a clean look from three, but he was well off. I'll give you all just one guess as to who would take the next shot for LA. Brian on his way! It's a one-point game! He's so tired, he can barely pick his feet up. Like, dude, come on. I, Man, I, I can't be speechless in these videos, but like, what do you want from me? Whoever had the matchup against Kobe in this game, in this case, it was Trey Lyles, legitimately played great defense. Lyles was in Kobe's grill on that shot, and Kobe shot just 5 of 20 from deep on the game, yet of course, in this moment, he still splashed. The Utah Jazz still had a fair shot at spoiling the party with under a minute remaining, but despite a fantastic look at three, Shelvin Mack was unable to quell the Lakers' momentum. Take it away, Bill and Stu. Look who has the ball! <laughs> With half a minute to play, Bryant for the lead! Yes! Kobe Bryant gives the Lakers the lead! <laughs> oh, I tell you something, this is, you know, he was legendary before this game. This is, this takes it to an absolute another level. A whole nother level. Level. Absolutely freaking lutely. I'll, I'll never forget watching this moment live. Just sheer greatness. 
And once again, in any situation, the Jazz would absolutely live with that shot at that moment of the game. A deep two-point jumper from a tired player, a late arriving, albeit reasonable, contest of the shot, but those factors just don't matter when it comes to destiny. That shot gave Kobe 58 points in the game, and the Lakers a one-point lead. After a scrambled possession for the Jazz, Trey Lyles was perfectly contested by Julius Randle, forcing a miss, and that was their last chance. Kobe to the line in an attempt to seal the game, and seal a 60-point game. A 60-point game for Kobe Bryant! In the greatest farewell performance we've ever seen. 60 points. 60. And why not one final assist? His fourth of the game ahead to Clarkson for the insurance dunk. 60 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists. The game-winning jump shot after leading a 15-point comeback, all done at the age of 37 in his 20th season. The greatest final career game in the history of sports. What else can I say? I can't, can't believe this happened. <laughs> you know, like I can't even, this is crazy to me, man. It's crazy to me. It's crazy. And I can what? I think Kobe really represented all of us basketball fans in that moment. It truly was an unpredictable, unprecedented, and unbelievably iconic performance by an NBA star to end his career. The likes of which we've never seen and will most likely never see again. I wasn't able to show all of or even most of the tribute videos that were featuring during the broadcast of the game, but the sheer amount of NBA greats, including a huge chunk of the core that we still see as faces of the league, that took time to shout out and honor Kobe, well that says everything about his legacy as a basketball player in my opinion. Personally, I'll be honest, I never was truly a Kobe guy in terms of fandom. I love Steve Nash, I love LeBron, I didn't necessarily love Kobe like I know a lot of you guys do, but that has never stopped me from realizing how impactful he is on the game of basketball. In my years playing organized ball, I'm not sure there was a single team practice or basketball camp that I attended in which Kobe's work ethic or his footwork or his Mamba mentality wasn't brought up by a coach. In terms of his standing all time in the NBA, I mean those debates will live on forever. But when it comes to discussion of the greatest LA Laker ever, I think that question has been answered by two people he would be competing with for the title. Old man, welcome to our new life. It was fun playing with you, it was fun playing against you. Best Laker ever. He is not only a great and unbelievable sports icon, but also He's the greatest to wear the purple and go. Kobe confirmed after this game just how important those words are coming from Magic Johnson specifically. You know, Magic was all over my wall. You know, I used to wear really big knee pads because Magic wore really big knee pads. You know what I mean? I used to practice the baby hook. like, And so um, he is and always will be number one for me. Always. I hate to disagree with Kobe, obviously, but uh, Mamba, I think you're wrong on this one. I think you're the GOAT Laker. Bryant retired as the Lakers all-time leader in games played, minutes, field goals made, three-pointers made, free throws made, points, steals, playoff games played, playoff points. Yeah, that list is uh, very extensive. Guys, I'll mention again in the sake of full transparency that I was never a true Kobe fan during his career, but still, that didn't stop me from being absolutely shaken to my core on January 26th, 2020, when in a truly earth-shattering event, Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven other people were tragically killed in a helicopter accident. During this series here on my channel, I haven't discussed Kobe's death at any great length, and I don't really want to either. We all know how devastating that moment was for Bryant's family and the NBA world. It's impossible to truly capture the essence of grief from a collective group of people, because when tragic events happen, every single person can and probably does react differently. Whether it's right or wrong, whenever I think of Kobe's passing, I find myself reflecting on the images from Lakers fans that he so clearly had a positive impact on. I reflect on the strength of his wife Vanessa when she accepted Kobe's induction into the Basketball Hall of Fame. I reflect on how truly special and important he was to the game of basketball, including the final memory of him scoring 60 points to end his career in 2016. To my family, my wife Vanessa, our daughters Natalia and Gianna, you know, thank you guys for all your sacrifice. You know, for all the hours I spent in the gym working and training. And Vanessa, you holding down the family the way that you have. I, I, I can't, there's no way that I can thank you enough for that. So, yeah, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And, uh, what can I say? Mamba out.
This is usually the part of the video where I continue my typical shtick of making silly jokes about the game we just witnessed. It just doesn't really feel right. It doesn't feel appropriate for this one. I do hope you all found this video enjoyable. And if you've watched the entire Kobe series, let me know down below and just a big thank you to you as well. I'd love to hear your guys' favorite Kobe memory down below in the comment section. Take it easy, y'all.